all those things I met only on board of the ship when I uh, did my first uh, voyage. Most probably the decision was made instead of me. If they show you one time and second time you don't know how to do, this is your problem. And then my father explained me that maybe it was the best thing happened to me in my life. So 18 years old guy, never been on the ship before. Yeah. How is that? I don't have any chance to escape. And I didn't want to escape. From the very beginning, everybody understand that you're a fresh guy, you're new in this sphere and you need support. So people support. I was thinking that when I sign off from ship, I will be like this or like this. <laughs>
memory lives with you. Yes, just people go by, but yeah. So yeah. your advice is, is get practice as soon as possible. Yes, sure. And uh, there are so many speaking clubs everywhere. Many of them are free, free to enter. There you can make so many friends of different ages, but um, mostly it's young people. Uh, old generation also uh, like to study languages, especially like very foreign languages, uh, English, Espanol, French, Italian. It's, uh, it's good for your brain because you make some, some kind of brainstorm for you, especially when you are retired. Since you, I would say, since you learned English quite young age, so being already on the first course of uh, college, you already had possibility to get the source of information from yeah. the foreign books. Did you do that or you still study it on the, let's say, national books? Uh, I didn't open, uh... For example, navigation uh, or uh, ships handling books in English. All those things I met only on board of the ship when I uh, did my first uh, voyage. But for example, Colrex, I learn and I read in English. I never learn in Russian uh, or Ukrainian language because I knew that when I go on ship, they will not ask me in the Russian language and uh, Ukrainian, only English. So you will be forced to get get the answer on yeah. the language you will be understood. Yes, yes, exactly. So we will come back a bit to your childhood and your parents. So your father is Simon. Yes, but originally he is a vet, like veterinar, veterinary, uh, this kind of doctor for animals. He chose this education only to escape from the village. Then he realized that it's not his uh, dream job. Mm. Being a seaman. No, being a vet. Being, okay. Then he did uh, engineering, but on shore, uh, car repairmen uh, and all. So many security jobs, like only to get paid and survive. Survival jobs. Approximately at what age he joined Maritime industry. 30 years. 30 years. Three zero. As, as uh, let's say, rating. As, as a Viper. As a Viper. So he chose the engineering department. Yes. Yes. Now he way. is in what position? Second engineer. So he started sailing around 20 years back uh, in 2003. I was born in 2001. After two years of uh, like family life, my father realized that he needs more money to give a good quality of life for the family. Yeah, great. About the college, did the college provide you with the all necessary knowledge which is required for the occupying the job of navigator in the future? Yes, uh, they gave me all the basics I need. There were many extra things which are already part of the history because we have uh, this fishing industry in the name of the college and so we have a, a couple of subjects about about this of course i didn't experience uh, fishing vessels i work only on container and tanker ships but it uh, it was good for uh, just be well educated to understand how it's working in the sphere and to to realize that fishing vessels, fishing fleet is very difficult, very complicated. Indeed. And so many guys from our college, they experience this fleet. And I spoke with those guys and I understood that I pick a good option when I go on the merchant fleet on the tanker. And so they actually get on practice on the fishing vessel. Yes. I can tell you once I was offered and nearly joined the fishing vessel. Mm. Some something good I did in my life, but you know, it didn't came into a force. So I was almost ready, but then something went wrong or good because I don't know how is this bad luck or luck. So I didn't get that opportunity. And then my father explained me that maybe it was the best thing happened to me in my life. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, like we are seamen, keeping everything in the secret. Like, you know, I got the job opportunity. I don't tell anyone uh, in order to not lose this opportunity. 
like that. So because of this uh, attitude, I nearly put myself, you know, in the situation when I find myself on the fishing vessel. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I hope uh, it's good experience not to go there, but I do respect the people who work there. Yeah, I, I met many people as well who were ex-navigators, we can say fishermen, that like, you know, because you are not actually the navigator, which we, you know, in the, in the common understanding, because the most, the, 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 your aim is actually to catch the fish, then you are mm -hmm. navigating on, on between this process. And during this process, everyone almost involved in this, so what, what I know. And then I got, I also know many stories. I also respect this fleet and I, truly believe that it is difficult. Okay, in the college, you graduated the college. Yeah, yeah. let's say, how many years you studied? Four? Four years, yes. Then after four years, uh, how did you build your career? First of all, I graduated uh, from the college. But before that, before the graduation, I catch the uh, deadline almost like one or two days uh, I got before the deadline. Uh, I signed off from the ship during the COVID. That time I worked on the container ship, which was on the line, constantly same ports near uh, East Africa, Madagascar. And this was your first uh, international voyage. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So it was what, 2020? Yeah, from 2020, from September to April 2021. So that's uh, exactly when COVID started, let's say in March 20, you still, you were studying still. I uh, finished my uh, semester exactly on the March of 2020 and I was about to join the ship. But exactly on that time, uh, everything Ukraine, just closed. Ukraine closed the borders and my flight was canceled. I was planned to join uh, another vessel, a container ship. Uh, as a deck cadet on the same company which I eventually joined. But uh, the job offer was as deck cadet on another ship, which was only making two ports in the Red Sea, Jeddah and Sudan, which is a pretty complicated uh, area. Uh, as I understand, it's very hot and uh, short, short uh, voyages. A short leg. Short leg, yeah, it's always very difficult. And that's not actually good for practical navigation. Yes, yeah, because yes. On, everything is just the same course, opposite course yes, and yes. finish. Especially for second mate, it's easy life. <laughs> yeah, life is easy, but you know, that's when you already don't want to learn much. Yes, yes. You already on this area, you know everything. But being a young, uh, let's say, seaman, I would say you would like to see the world, you would like to see more. So, Eventually, uh, you joined something in September. In September. 2020. Yeah. yeah I so the, the, the COVID already were like, say, under control, like beginning of taking kind of under control about these uh, boosters or... Yeah, yeah. Uh, vaccination, uh, vaccination and regulation were slack. Yeah. Uh, so... Especially for semen. Because I remember the time we like uh, all these uh, unions, uh, also our Ukrainian uh, maritime union mm. of seafarers, they were fighting to give the way for yes. seamen to, you know, like to at least to make these uh, crew changes. You know, we can't yeah, even travel, yeah, because uh, actually in the port we were not allowed to go outside anymore. Yeah, so the ports were quite close, but at least crew changes uh, to do. So, how many months you did during that? I did 7.5 months. How, how is it? Is it difficult for first time? Very, very difficult. Can you explain your feeling? You are, um, let's say, 20 year old guy. Yeah, 20, 20. I joined in 18 years old. I was 18. Oh, so it's not after the graduation. It was. Uh, it was before. Before yeah. the graduation, yes. like first, yes. first practice. So 18 years old guy, never been on the ship before. Yeah. How is that? You're same like alien. You're from different worlds and you don't get what to do. Uh, whatever you get in college or academy, you completely forget when you face the reality. Uh, for me, it was a 
directly, I joined directly watchkeeping duties on the gangway. And uh, luckily it was uh, very easy because you have only two buttons up and down. Uh, it's electric uh, power. So same like elevator, you know. The crew was uh, fully Ukrainian uh, on this ship. The ship was 1996 year built, container uh, 1,100 tail, around 170 meters uh, length overall. It was uh, very rusty. I seem, I, I spotted this when I entered the port on the taxi, on the cab. It was very obvious that uh, I'm gonna face a huge problems on this ship, but I don't, I don't have any chance to escape. And I didn't want to escape. Like from the first day, I, I said to myself, I will do it, I will continue, because I, I'm sure I will not die, and the other, other things I can manage. <laughs> Did you have kind of euphoria uh, when you joined the first time? Like, you know, Two years you're already studying something about this, yeah? And then you want to see it. Did you have something like, really, ah, I want to Yes, uh, and at the same time you have the reaction of uh, uh, pure fear. You're so scared. Because you get information constantly, new information, and you don't, how, you don't know how to manage it in your head. So the first advice for the people who join the vessel, always bring notebook with you and pen always i write everything whatever uh, my superior officer say to me and i don't use a phone on tanker it's prohibited on deck on the container ship you can you can use the phone it was my first watch on the deck uh, on the gangway uh, cargo operation was about to finish and in uh, three hours uh, we sail out so my first unmooring was on the first day and I was a OS, ordinary seaman, the only OS on the forecastle with the chief mate and bosun. Wow. And all of them Ukrainians, all of them are uh, 30 years plus older than me. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know completely. Bosun was shouting, what are you doing? What is going on? Chief mate was on the control, yeah. And the situation was, uh, in my head, it was a total disaster, but in fact it wasn't because unmooring is much easier than mooring. Uh, because from the shore, they just give the lines and you pick up. Uh, so basically, not much action. I was scared. Uh, then uh, when we sail out, I understand it's it's okay. So we we did it. We managed. Okay. If if let's say in the future you are chief officer and you meet situation when the guy first time coming on board, uh, the the only three hours actually were between like you join the vessel and vessel need to sail to sail. Yeah. Mm. Is it any chance to get the guy? with the familiarization. I, I can't say even about the vessel, but just to give him an idea, like, okay, this is here, this is here, this is here. Like, I mean, what we face now, it is the practical need, like operation, and then requirement. As per requirement, it is definitely supposed to be done. Yes. On the practice, did you have opportunity to do it? Or, my another question, will you find the opportunity to do it when you are chief officer and you meet the guy who joined the vessel first time. Yes, uh, of course. If I was a chief mate, I would make the familiarization, or I give it to the, let's say, third mate, uh, who is uh, my assistant for the safety. It depends from the company. Was the that company. opportunity to swap uh, ordinary Siemens with, let's say, on the aft more experienced Siemens, correct? It was a chance, but so, they didn't. So they didn't manage the situation. Was that over reliance on, on, on you or something like that? So, or maybe kind of negligence from their side, yeah? Most probably negligence and uh, inexperienced chief mate 
but he was, uh, as per the ages, he was quite uh, old for the chief mate, 55 years old. It just happened. I got the familiarization uh, with the, my reliever, but it was like uh, small talk. Like you, we go on bridge, okay, here you have mop, bucket, uh, here is your cabin, here is a uh, mess room, that's it. Okay, once you are one week on board already, like first shock already gone, yeah? This first trip, how many days it was? First trip? When you cast off? 12 hours. 12 hours. So. <laughs> and then mooring now, yeah? So which is more complicated as you already mentioned, like right? Make, uh, making fast. Yeah, but we didn't make fast, we just uh, anchored because of the COVID restrictions. Uh, and also the port was occupied the terminal uh, so how many days you stay at anchor around one or two days and then we go alongside okay first shock passed then how did you feel yourself on the vessel i was so excited everywhere i go i learn something new and uh, i actually face the things that i was taught about in the college what about the crew side? Were they, let's say, with the positive also behavior? Yeah, from the very beginning, everybody understand that you're a fresh guy, you're new in this sphere and you need support. So people support, uh, especially if this is the same nationality, it's much easier uh, because you understand the culture, the traditions and all. Uh, but sometimes when the time already passed, for example, one month, the, the crew starts to uh, require from you uh, the knowledge, like even uh, your colleagues on deck, if they show you one time and second time you don't know how to do it, this is your problem because you don't remember it, you, this, is, this is mistake. So you need to learn fast. Yeah, you, you must learn fast. You, because uh, maritime, this is fear for the people who already uh, certificated, uh, meet the uh, standards, international standards. Uh, and when the people are not ready to do the job, this is the, the problem. Because you already on the ship means you must do your duties. You must perform. It doesn't matter how, how good there is minimum requirement and minimum you must do and if something more it's good for you of course your first time on the vessel you don't know many things you are trying to learn fast but the maritime job is related to many hazards and risks yeah uh, did you meet kind of situation when you've been like close to something like wow wow Yes, on this uh, kind of ship, which was very, very old, I faced so many problems uh, which you will never see on the new, on new vessel. For example, during the cargo operation, we got a hole on the bottom of the cargo hold. Okay. Hole to the ballast tank. And there was fontaine. Of course. <laughs> like the cargo hold is empty and uh, the cargo operation continues like the ship's crane, there was sh two ship's crane on this ship uh, and the contain container was about to be loaded on the bottom. Or the hold. Uh, yeah. Uh, so how did it happen? There was a kind of swell and the whole operation was the, on anchorage, which is quite uh, irregular for the container ship because it's small uh, size. It can enter uh, not uh, highly developed areas. Same it happened to me. We go to the Madagascar port Majunga, and it was uh, Operation on Anchorage when uh, the barges with the six containers come alongside to your ship, make fast, and with the ship's crane you put and discharge. You load and discharge the discharge six containers the only, yeah? yeah. You load and discharge at the same time, simultaneous operations. How the, uh, this emergency happened, just they, they put, they load the container and they hit with the sharp edge, the rusty, fully rusty bottom. 
uh, and the hole was not so big. We didn't even uh, stop the operation. We continue, but we load only this, uh, how it rolls. The base. The base, yeah. Uh, and the center where there was a hole, we just keep uh, empty. We call the feeder, which was not in the working condition, let's say. So you discharge water from the this ballast? Uh, yeah, we discharge yeah. with the portable, uh, with, with some uh, wielding pump, portable yeah. pump. And uh, we call fitter to fix the problem. So he makes some arrangement, some handmade, put rubber, stick and finish. Finish story. Then on the sailing, uh, they make a welding and all the procedures. So, so do not, uh, let's say, delay cargo operation. Yeah, yeah there was no just delay. didn't, uh, uh, you, you left this uh, row empty, let's say, yeah, this yes, slot. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this slot was empty. Also on the container ships, it's uh, quite common when uh, uh, the, there is a damage from the shore side. They damage your, uh, uh, some railings, some part of cargo hold, and you, not you, chief mate, makes some letter of protest or something. But it's not kind of emergency, it's normal. We got the problem with the ballast system. For example, chief mate takes a ballast in a three port ballast tank and we have a list on the starboard. Uh, why? Because there are many holes between tanks and you take in one tank, it goes to another one. Wow. It was total disaster. I was thinking that when I sign off from ship, I will be like this or like this. <laughs> it was crazy. And one time during cargo operation, I fall from the bed during the sleep because there was so, so huge list. List, yeah. On the first day when I joined the ship, I face like, nobody will say this is a huge problem, but in fact it is. Uh, I see insects in my room, in my cabin, like I just uh, lie down on the bed and I feel something, something strange. I spot something strange in my body and I realize it's cockroach. Cockroaches? Yes. And then I uh, switch uh, on the light. I open some drawer and I see the whole, you know, drawer of shit, shit ton of the cockroaches. Uh, there is what, food inside? No, there was many plates which this guy left for me as a present. Wow. And uh, then I claimed to chief mate. He said, oh, why, oh my God, like I never seen uh, this kind of problem. Okay, we will manage something. And he gave me this kind of uh, spray. spray to kill them, but it never helps. First of all, another thing, it uh, affects your health more than their, because they don't care. Like they will escape to another uh, cabin and then come back. I just accept it. Okay, I understand this is old ship. What do, what are you gonna expect? You just accept and live with this. If you want to continue the job and uh, get money. Somehow this problem was dissolved, like disappear. I even didn't notice them. And I didn't eat in my room, never. Also, I cleaned much. So the hygiene, that's also I try to explain everyone being on the vessel or being a port captain uh, coming on the ship and making inspection of cabins. And I say this, even apple, even biscuits, yeah, anything, bread, left, oh, maybe even for a short time, and then something remains, something forgot, maybe rolling, maybe this apple will go yes. somewhere under the bed. So you never know. And the maintaining of the hygiene and preventing of this taking food uh, in the cabin is actually a key to the, at least that you live without cockroaches. Yeah. yeah, this is the key point. Like that's why you have mess room, right? Yeah. You have mess room, you have galley. This you you can place. come mess room anytime if you, let's say, want some snack. I, I mean, if, if the management actually, let's say, deal with this. Yeah. Sometimes you come in the mess room, nothing there. It happened to me first voyage, like, they serve only the plate. Messman gives you plate with the exact amount of the food. After the uh, schedule, after the completion of, let's say, breakfast, dinner or something, you have zero in the fridge. You have nothing. Only you can 
drink coffee or tea and smoke cigarettes, which you buy <laughs> for your money. <sighs> yeah, this is sad to, uh, thing. Okay, but this uh, contract anyway completed successfully. Then yeah. you came home and then continue your study in the college. Yeah, like uh, fourth course was uh, only half year. You have one year for the Theory. practice. Ah, practice. Okay. For the practice, then you come back like from the March until July you study uh, whatever remaining. And it was a quite good contrast because when you got this experience, it's fresh. And then you come in the college, you feel like you're already uh, experienced captain with the background of 40 years. Ah, what you're telling me. Ah, what you're telling I'm me. just yeah. been there. Yeah, I just been there. Yeah. yeah, and many of the students was like that. They choose the subject, whatever they need and whatever they don't need, they don't care. I, I see what, what people, uh, whoever choose uh, such option, uh, they were more successful in the career because if you focus on something, you know that you need it. You can filter the information like on the website. If you look for the BMW, you don't need to check uh, Hyundai. You just don't need it. And uh, for example, about studies, you make a minimum on the subjects you don't, you don't like, you don't it's unnecessary for you. You do the minimum, you get your uh, uh, marks and, and that's it. You focus on the, uh, on the essentials. Or, but from my side, I always learn everything. <laughs> I did all of the subject and uh, I completed education uh, with the right diploma as a, one of the best students. I can't say that I'm the best because so many guys were with the all five five out of five from uh, my group which was a budget group uh, government pays yeah. for our education uh, there was uh, 13 or 14 guys with red diploma out of 30. that's a very good amount also we got chance for example you have uh, four you have a uh, mm, not a good mark for you from the second or third course, you can make it again. Uh, second time, uh, pass the exam on, on five. So many guys did uh, in such way. But I, from the very, very beginning, I get five. So I don't need to um, come back to this. Yeah, pre exam Yeah. So then you complete, you graduated this mm -hmm. on, after the first uh, course and the successful passing of exams, correct? Yeah. Then um, then what? That was already 2021. Yeah, it was and, in and July. Then, and then you go and look for the job. Mm, no, I uh, just graduated from the college. Then I applied to Odessa Maritime Academy. Okay. And also it uh, was... Uh, to continue your To study. continue, yeah, to baccalaureate. Uh, on the base of junior specialist, you must uh, uh, give uh, exam, navigation, uh, ships handling. Uh, mostly it's like navigation, proficiency, job exam. They, they just uh, check your knowledge, your level. Normal government exams, which I passed in the 2019, uh, we call it ZNO. But yeah, in English, I don't know how, okay, how to spell so it. So it's standard for all uh, school students. Common standard exam. That's yeah, common standard exam, yeah. I applied to the Maritime Academy. Uh, successfully, I enter uh, on the budget. I was uh, nine, number nine uh, in the list. And there was uh, 11 places for, the, for this kind of education. Like, uh, government base. Yeah, government and support. Yeah. Uh, of the education. So I got, I got my uh, place. Uh, and meanwhile, I uh, developed myself in another sphere. It's IT. Okay. I enter uh, Gilel IT school, which I highly recommend 
for all young and uh, ambitious people or whoever want to switch their job. Okay. It doesn't matter uh, even about age. You can be 40, 50, 60. If you want to learn something new, you can do it. And there is a good uh, chance uh, to do so. Okay, to do what? There are many spheres. Uh, we, for example, what would I, you, what, I chose... What, what, what would you advise? We have, let's say, the channel for mariners or people more or less connected or would like to connect their lives with the sea. Can we say that being working on the vessel, you still have time to learn something additional for yourself, to study, to create, to be busy, busy with, or all your time, but as per contract approximately, you are working from 8 to 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Then you need to have some rest, correct? Yeah. Do you have time on the vessel to do something, a part of your job? I can say absolutely yes. Okay, then if we're talking about IT, what would you advise or what have you chosen? I chose front-end development. Okay. It's like uh, websites, the interface interaction on the on the site i learned html and css which is the basics of the web development it's like main body of the website is html css it's uh, how it looks colors and it's a cascade uh, i don't know how to spell but it gives you picture from the text it's uh make it nice but the javascript this is a independent uh, uh, programming language which is uh, uh, very popular nowadays one of the most popular i don't know which place but uh, many people choose it even uh, against c plus plus against uh, uh, some uh, java uh, python they prefer this one because it's uh, Multi-purpose. You can write front end and back end. It's it's very interesting. So the for, for the seafarers, I can uh, suggest such directions as uh, back end first of all and big data because uh, on the ship you work with the huge ton of information which you must sort out, figure it out very fast. And as fast you do it, the more spare time you have. The more free time you have, the more happy you are. You, you feel apply, freedom. Did you apply this knowledge somewhere during your career? Uh, as I mentioned that I did front end, like I applied it uh, in, my, in my mind. I sort the information very fast. So when you work with some technology, one, another, third one, and then you come up with the idea that all of them work on the very similar principles and you can get the information to work with the interface, with the program, to understand it very quick. For example, uh, Microsoft Office, Excel, Publisher, uh, PowerPoint, you can work with these programs. Before, I didn't uh, use much. I just used to work with the Word, Excel, and even didn't touch PowerPoint. But when you g go deeply, you understand each application have own uh, appliance, own purpose, and you can deal with this. Also, I learned Excel on board, like to apply formulas and all of this stuff, because when you got experience in IT, like you understand there are some algorithms if you want to get, for example, some you you want to get some you you need to uh, take one another one plus you write equality and something like that you just write a letter in your mind you write a letter or sentence but on this language it's also language until what level did you study the it or do you continue studying i continue studying now i do this is an online courses yeah it's online and offline uh for the moment i I prefer remote, so I learned JavaScript because uh, 
it's just very interesting for me and I want to apply it uh, in my projects, in a freelance, maybe to have experience in uh, office atmosphere, uh, work in office, on some outsource company. I look for opportunities. Okay, after the graduation, you still, you, you apply to Maritime Academy. You yes. start uh, learning IT. Yeah. Have you continued your Maritime career? Uh, after I joined IT, I, uh, I continue studies in a Maritime Academy. I stop, uh, I like make, yeah, make some two years uh, stoppage on, in IT to continue my Maritime career, to succeed my first uh, dream and my first goal to become a third officer. What kind of vessel was that? My first tanker, Swiss Box, uh, in the Eastern Pacific Shipping Company, which is a Singapore company, Indian management. What did you carry there? We carry crude oil, mostly, on this Swiss Max, only crude oil, high H2S, like uh, we can explain later on what is H2S, uh, but the topic is about my tanker experience, I start in the Maritime Academy and uh, that time I passed the exams. Then I got one month, by luck, I got one month of kind of vacation because the crew change was delayed from the December 2021 until January 22. I was uh, just relaxing, chilling. Uh, also, I visited Kiev with my friends on the Christmas and uh, 11th January 2022, I left Ukraine, which uh, was a coincidence, happy coincidence for me. I didn't face the war physically, but I uh, faced it, uh, of course, mentally on board. When it happened, I came on the watch. Uh, I used to keep watch with the chief mate. At that time was Turkish chief mate. My best chief mate. Uh, he influenced me so much. He was my mentor and the soul mate. We were same like friends, but we got a very strict border between us. Uh, so when I came on watch, uh, chief mate said that there is a war in Ukraine and I couldn't believe it. I said, don't lie to me. I, I can't believe it. Are you joking? Yeah. And then I checked the news. I phoned my family and I cried full watch. Yeah, it was a shock. So then uh, I just realized that I can't do anything. Uh, I'm on board and uh, it's only beginning of contract. It was for just one month past, exactly one month. So I just said to myself, I will not check news. I will uh, focus on job. I will keep in touch with family and uh, all of my friends. Uh, and that's how I saved my mental health for this contract. And was someone with Russian nationality on board on that vessel? Yes, uh, the captain was Russian and uh, I joined the ship when uh, the captain was already on board. There was no war. Yes. When the war started, our relations was the same. Okay. We, were, we were good. And this was the, the most experienced, the, the wisest captain I ever seen. He was like the father of the ship. How old is he? 43 that time. 43, captain. 43 and 10 years of experience as a master. Okay. And it was a uh, second time on the same ship. Uh, eventually, he did five times on, on the ship as a captain. Talking about uh, relations uh, between uh, me as Ukrainian and uh, a Russian superior, uh, Russian captain, uh, it was the uh, same like with the, any other nationality. On board, we don't speak about uh, politics. Uh, and basically, I think this is my position that I don't care 
which nationality, which uh, color of skin, which, uh, I don't know, you're straight or you're gay or you're lesbian, I don't care. I care about human values, what kind of human are you. Uh, this is the most important for me. And if you're from uh, Moscow or from Kiev or from, uh, uh, I don't know, from Kansas, it doesn't matter. What matters is uh, how you act, what you do. This is the, for me, this is the main thing, key point. Some uh, seamen, they met kind of bullying, especially if they, we say any nationality, we would say opposite nationalities, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, if, if to say about your example, yeah? How do you think we, we we decided to come back to health, uh, uh, mental health, yeah? So, can you imagine the situation when the, there is a war, there is a, somebody representative of the top four officers with Russian nationality, and he is, let's say, active with the bullying and saying that what is going on is correct, and the person on the vessel with Ukrainian nationality can't handle it. How the situation, how, how would you imagine the feelings of this person? Uh, I would imagine this is a horrible no-go situation. And uh, if I was in such case, uh, I would claim everywhere. First of all, you have a whistleblow a policy in any company, wherever you work. You can contact DPA, your mining office. Uh, in, and if company doesn't manage the question, you can claim to ITF. Always you can do it. If your rights and the, your uh, working atmosphere affects your uh, performance. And I did so uh, on the last ship. I became third mate in a very young age, uh, in 21 years old. Third officer on tanker. From the words of my company, this is the first case. Uh, in the history of this company. Uh, Case what? When you... When uh, the, the guy who joined the ship as a deck cadet, he get promotion on board to junior officer and then direct transfer on another vessel in the rank of third mate. All of this for the period of, of uh, six months. Uh, totally I made seven months from cadet to third mate. And this was kind of excuse from the company because they consider many factors and uh, my uh, ambitions, uh, everything. But the main thing in this was uh, my soft skills, my representation, self-PR. And I highly suggest to the uh, young generation, develop your own soft skills from the, the very beginning, whenever you face the problems, any problem can be solved by the soft skills, by negotiation and uh, discussion. If you are not satisf satisfied with uh, something, you can say it. And my uh, adventure from cadet to deck officer started in November 2022. Uh, I joined 16 November. Then I worked as deck cadet until uh, end of February. From 1st February, I request uh, the company to promote me to junior officer. But normally there is no promotion process to junior. It's a middle stage between the cadet and the third mate. But I still apply. Why did I do this? Because if you don't care, if you don't take actions for yourself, nobody will... Uh, we call it don't ask, don't have. Yes. If you don't ask, you don't have. Sure. So the hesitation and modesty should be left apart. Yeah. yeah. The, mod the modest thing is somewhere else. Yeah? If you feel, yeah, if you feel ready and you can answer the question why we should promote you, why we should give you more salary, why we have to put you on the newer vessel just because I did this, 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 so you need to have some excuse, yeah, explanation. Yeah. Be ready for this question. But anyway, don't sit 
and wait until something from heaven will come yeah. here. You need to make action from your side. Yeah, and there, uh, like, there is a good idiom from uh, Russian uh, language, but uh, I will like translate to English. Under uh, under the rock, under laying rock, water will never come. So they just take action if you're ready. In case of promotion, request the captain first of all, discuss. But nobody likes much talking. People like to see uh, the results, see the actions, performance. So the the most important, of course, to be uh, reliable to see yourself, to reflect in yourself in your mind that, okay, if I request this, most probably it will be accepted. But there is no point to make prognosis. Just request, claim whatever you want and be ready. So I did promotion to junior officer from 1st March. It took one or two weeks uh, to to upload this all, uh, to approve this... Uh, the process. Process, yeah. The process too. And the company immediately said, uh, said that we will, uh, we will review your uh, request. Then uh, they, rec they ask from the captain the evaluation report. We have uh, two forms, like evaluation uh, and also feedback on the uh, deck cadet or uh, junior officer with the uh, tones of questions and information which you must like answer but there is no interview for uh, uh, junior officers process a bit easier yeah it's so easy. just it's just easy. a stop in, uh, the, the step in between the officer position yes. and the rating position yeah just uh, you must forget about pride forget that you are uh, in in your mind you're uh, very smart or you are uh, you think you are stupid but in fact you are not just request and uh, see whatever will happen if you ask and they say no okay i go ahead nothing happened you tried i at least i tried but if i first of all you already notify everyone with your serious intention yes which is also a positive result in the end yes so, so you successfully got this position? Yeah. For how so many months you stayed junior? Uh, 1.5 months. And then? And then uh, I, after one month pass, exactly, I request to become third officer. Also, my luck that uh, on this ship was newly promoted third mate, which was not experienced exactly on this ship. So I started managing third officer job when I was junior. So you could show yourself. Yes, yes, exactly. And second reason that a uh, Romanian captain, which was on this ship uh, like before, during the crew change, when I joined as cadet, he disembarked. Mm -hmm. And Russian captain uh, came on board together with me. Uh, we joined at Singapore. Uh, so eventually Romanian captain gave me a promotion. How did it happen? I just... In the first day, uh, I spoke with him. I intend to become third mate. I want to be transferred on other ship. Since the third mate on, on this vessel, I don't have chance to relieve him. So we started the, this process and uh, captain gave me time, gave me opportunities to show myself. And I did it also. Like I was assisting third mate I was uh, preparing the ship for LSA, for FA, uh, all of the equipments, all of the paperwork uh, for the port, for the inspections. For this period, seven months, I experienced two waiting inspections, three port state inspections, one class survey, one navigational audit. So many things happened and it, in total, it was uh, very probably that I can be third officer. And the company approved it. What about you now? You doing some music. 
It's yes. your passion or you are going to take it more serious way? Yes, music is uh, my passion. Uh, comedy is my life. I don't get people who uh, who assume the life is so serious. Like, for example, on ship, nobody uh, nobody like people with a stone face. Not only on the ship, it's everywhere. People like when when people are smiling. It's uh, it's common sense. It's normal, but uh, from another hand, it's impossible to smile all the time. And it's about uh, another side <laughs> of abnormality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you. You consider the man maybe something wrong in his life. Maybe tell his tell homework. us about uh, what you achieved in uh, your passion. I achieved uh, satisfaction. Ah, I mean, feelings. I, exactly. Or, You're doing music. You you write the album. Yes. So my achievements as a musician is uh, like I release five songs, five single tracks, and then I make a full album. This is hip hop. I like hip hop. I make hip hop. Just recently, I released my uh, first album the name is uh, stop war on all platforms like soundcloud spotify uh, apple music you can tell your name uh, and uh, my nickname is rockstar marine we put it also and the yeah a link in in bio <laughs> i recorded the album only for one month and it was uh, like very very common for uh, people with uh, such talents of art, when you get uh, some idea, you want to release it fast. Yeah. So normally I record voice part on my phone, on voice memo, then I send to the sound producer and he arrange for the beat and all sound. But the best thing, of course, it's when you record on studio with the professional microphone. I did uh, a matter, I did uh, like handmade. And I love it because this is the art you can do however, whatever you like. Then you can see feedback from the uh, people, from the audience. Uh, but it's not my first thing, like to get feedback. Of course, it's very important. It's essential. But I did it for myself. And also music saved my life when I was on ship. The part of the album, many voice parts, was recorded even during watch keeping. It was a, it was a kind of reflection of my soul. On the first contract as a deck officer, I experienced uh, bullying from all of my superior officers, which was uh, not my nationality. All of them were from the another continent. Let's come back to bullying. The bullying yeah. affected your mental health how how did you recognize it uh, this is the point that i recognized it late that it was bullying uh, because i was so excited and my uh, eyes were uh, in uh, pink sunglasses so you over trust people over trust yeah over reliance uh, on people uh, also so many personal things i share which i could keep with me okay. and just work high high can you say it like you know you were let's say prepared for the position from the competence and professional point of view but the life experience didn't let's say bring you uh, you didn't meet such let's say two-faced people before like you know they were older than you i believe those superiors mm. of you yeah so you you are 21 year old person you are, can we say that trust everyone, you believe that we are a team yes, and, yes, and, yes. and you share and these people always have something else on the, the side. on the back side, on the, on the mind, probably against you mm -hmm. and probably use uh, all this, let's say, open soul talks yes. then against you. Then you re recognized late and then you 
what, what was? That was some kind of what? First thing was that captain informed the office about my strange behavior without warning. Without notifying you? Yes, without even talking to me. But before that, we got some small talk about my background. And uh, as I mentioned before, I'm good in soft skills. I'm good at uh, self PR. So I gave him only the key points from my experience, whatever is applicable for the captain to hear from, from third officer, uh, whatever he need, I just give him shortcut information. Always, I understand the principle, and that's why I don't uh, give water to him. Since you achieved uh, your goal, yeah, uh, and became a third officer, and then maybe some something was related to mental health. What three things you would advise to pay attention at to young seamen, maybe young navigators? to start develop it already, being still in the processing of studying, to be more prepared for the future job? First thing, it's uh, soft skills. What kind? Uh, what kind? Like uh, attitude, you must filter uh, your uh, topics, your words, whatever you say, because it's kind of empathy. You just must develop empathy. Consider yourself on the place of uh, the other man and it will help you everywhere, in any sphere. For example, I got a good case when uh, the Danish pilot in Danish Straits, uh, Straits told me, imagine you are third mate on this ship and then you take action. Like, how would you feel comfortable to avoid collision? in advance, in time, or in uh, five minutes before the collision. And uh, he additionally said, I don't like waypoint navigators. Like if you have a route, it doesn't matter, it's railway. It's water, it's open uh, space. You can deviate. Yeah, you can deviate if it's more efficient. Second thing, what would you advise? Uh, second thing is public speech public speaking. Try to experience this in uh, your uh, friends' atmosphere in uh, college, in the academy, because for a uh, deck officer it's important on trainings and drills. And routines. And routines, of uh, course. On, on the moving station, on an emergency situation. Everywhere. Everywhere, yes. So you should be clearly understood and then your orders should be understood only one way. No, yes, double understand. And the third thing, what do you advise? Uh, languages, not only English, you can uh, learn any language. Why is it important? Because understanding the language gives you understanding of the culture, of the traditions, of the behavior of the people, gives you empathy. And how to develop empathy? Reading books, watching movies, just speaking with the people, be near the people, be open to them. Social, but, yeah? Yeah, be social, active, but depends on your uh, borders, like to feel yourself. Read the uh, psycho psychological books, uh, watch uh, different movies, not only one genre, listen to music. Uh, it's also kind of psychotherapy. For me, it helps. For example, when I was on ship, uh, when I'm sad, I I have a set playlist. When I'm happy, I have happy playlist. When I want to work hard, I have a work hard playlist with uh, some, uh, I don't know, rock and roll or hard uh, kind of hip hop. You became a third officer. This is the, your goal. You achieve it. Are you going to continue with your maritime career? What are your plans? Uh, for the moment, I plan to settle in uh, Sure, since I spent so much time in uh, so young age on the water, not on the ground, I didn't see the, the life in the best colors on, on shore. So I want to arrange my personal life. I want to find a new job, 
maybe somehow it could be connected to maritime. Also, I have own projects, own ideas. Music, I already developed myself in this sphere. I plan to make stand-up. I write stand-up uh, like concert. I don't know if I will perform uh, on a huge stage. First of all, I will uh, try out my material in uh, open mic. Also, I intend to record my own podcast. I have already one uh, episode with the Turkish third officer, uh, which I worked with uh, when I was the cadet. Uh, and I continue learning IT. Uh, my favorite ideal uh, lifestyle is uh, being a digital nomad. Like you can work anywhere and not be attached on the area. But do you consider still just some consideration that you come back still on the vessel for, yes. for that, as I said, you need some basic you know, living uh, yes. resources and maybe maybe some project require additional money for the base and on, on base of which you can then build something else. Yes, sure. Uh, like in case I fail everywhere, for example, I always have option to come back at sea. For a young generation, for the people I worked with, for the colleagues, it's very common nowadays. It's a new school of seafarers who goes there to get the specific amount of money and then realize to run your own projects or to change your lifestyle to the uh, one you want to have. So I'm not the special guy. I just uh, do whatever is uh, the best for myself, what I want to do. I think it's the key point of life when you do what you want, whatever you like. This is my key, key point of life is to be happy. Yeah. That's but it. It's, and then you need to do everything to be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But happy, happiness is a quite a difficult word and difficult uh, term because uh, also I, I think happiness, it's like it's in the moment when you enjoy the moment. It's not a constant period. Okay, I'm happy full life because it's different. Life is in interesting. Why? Because it's not black and white. It's different, different colors. Uh, and the the idea that you must be ready to to act, ready for emergency, and that's what the very essential thing I learned at sea: always be ready for the worst and hope for the best. Correct. Correct. On these words, I want to appreciate for this speech for that you are coming and I wish you that oh, you will bring you achieve all your goals and you bring all your plans alive. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's face to have a interview with the owner of Key4Mate uh, project, which was the first project in the Ukrainian social media and the Ukrainian maritime education which influenced me as well. Also, I applied so many knowledge from this. So also subscribe Keyformate, BMPC and Evgen also have a new project, Estumar. Be ready for content. Subscribe this channel and you will see many more interesting related to the maritime profession and the building of career. Bye.